Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, let's have a look of this lab file. Uh, for this week, it's pretty easy and straightforward. All we need to do is basically run the scripts. And there's no programming stuff in this one. So let's just do the first one. If you still remember the congestion control, uh, actually this one used to be a question in the final exam. Do you want to have a try? So what do we have? in one and two. At this point. And we are running on the uh, congestion control algorithm Reno. So why do we have one and two here? And what is the event at one? And what is the event at two? Yes. Which one is packet loss? Yeah, uh, actually. I think both of them are the packet loss. Let's have a look of the Fletcher slides. Uh, we can just jump to the slides and search Reno. And this is the TCP congestion control. Can you see the slides? Okay, so let's just quickly find the answers. Uh, we need to find the Reno. You can see this one. Mm. On the timeout event, we go back to one. And if we receive triple duplicate acknowledgement, which is the fast retransmission, then we cut down the congestion window by half. So now you have some answer. It's triple duplicate acknowledgement 
which is fast retransmit. And we come back to here. Now we know in the one here, we have a construction event, which is the tri triple duplicate act. And at two, we have a timeout event. So both of them are the packet loss event, but they have they do have some difference. And how can we call the phase three? This one is very basic. So maybe do not check the slides. Can you answer it right now? How can we call the phase three? As you can see here, it's a curve. And how can we call this curve? And what is phase four? These two stuff is also pretty basic and very important in the congestion control. So if you don't remember, it's just a quick look of this. Just a couple page before this one. You can see this one, slow star and AIMD. Let's have a look of the slow start. So the slow start is pretty simple and straightforward. So first one, we send one segment, then we send two segments. And if we can still get the acknowledgement for both of the packets, then we send four segments and etc. And that's the reason why you will see it's a curve instead of a straight line. And this is the slow start. And next one is the AIMD. After the slow start, then we will come to this area we call AIMD. So at ad ad addictive increase, then you can see the like we increase the congestion window number one by one. So it's a straight line. And we do have some calculation behind it. Do you have some idea? Uh, why should we have a drop of the congestion window in here. So why do we need to drop the congestion window by half in here? And what is the event at this place? So what is this? At this place. We just learned this before, right? You, you must have some idea what is this in here.
there is packet loss. What kind of packet loss? What kind of congestion rent? And if we call this one A, and we call this one B, and what is the relationship between A and B in the y-axis? This is y-axis. So A equal to what? Yes, you are right. So this will be triple duplicate acknowledgement in here. So let's re let's retransmit. And the B will equal to A divided by two. That's great. Now you get the idea. So, so let's try to figure this out step by step. So at the beginning, we are trying to send this file from, let's say from A to B, then we are sending the packet from one byte and we are trying to increase the congestion window size with the slow start phase because we want to send the file as soon as possible, but we also want to make it as stable as possible. But because from A to B, we will have no idea what is the maximum bandwidth like this. So now this is this is A and B and the and we we want to Even we know it, then we, we still need to discover like what is the most stable congestion window size, right? So that's the congestion algorithm, congestion control algorithm in TCP because we want to maintain the maximum construction window size so we can send the file at the maximum speed, but we also want to avoid the uh, packet loss event. Otherwise, it will waste lots of time. So we don't want any kind of timeout event. So that's the algorithm help us to maintain at the maximum congestion window size, then we can set it at a maximum stable speed over the TCP connection. So now we have some idea why should we need to have the congestion window size and the algorithm uh, and the like Reno algorithm. Then let's have a look of this one, AIMD. So why should we have AIMD here and what is the value for C at this point? Actually, what is the relationship of C and D? We don't need to know what is the value for C. Let's say C equal to 20K. Then what is D? And one of the question in the final exam is this one. What is uh, what if the value E equal to 18K? And what is F? And what is the value for G? So this is point E, point F, and point G.
So for C and D, it's pretty simple and straightforward. It's the same. So D equal to C divided by two. So it's 10K. And, but what is the value for F and G? This is the main calculation in the in, in this algorithm. If you can figure this out, then you should have no problem for this part. So now try to figure this out. What is the value for F and G? We just had a look of the slides. Try to figure out what is F and when you don't know, give it a try. This is the real question in the final exam last year. Come on, what is F and what is G? Just give it a try. Okay, I can see one answer here. Let's try to verify this one. We come back to here. Uh, this is the screenshot of that page. So I put it here. And let's try to calculate what is F. You can see in the renal algorithm, if we have timeout event, then we will set the construction window to one instead of, instead of zero. So we come to the beginning at the slow start, and we call this phase slow start. And the value G is 18K divided by two because of the second rule. And at this point, we will switch, switch from a slow star to AIMD. And that's it. And it will keep going until we reach another congestion event. So this is the renal algorithm. This one is always be tested in the final exam. So if we test the congestion control, we usually test TCP renal instead of Taho because uh, for Taho it's too, too easy and too straightforward. The Taho is pretty easy to understand. It just have one rules. No matter what kind of uh, a packet loss event, we will drop the congestion window size to one. And that's it. So usually we will calculate, we will do the calculate on the Reno. And because this has two rules.
And I hope you find this one useful in the final exam. But don't worry about it. We will also have a try of this kind of question uh, in the session, uh, in the tutorial too. But now you have some taste of the final exam question. Uh, usually, the final exam is much easier than midterm exam. And let's come to the exercise one. So do not put this one into your report. This one is just an exercise. And the exercise one should be in your report. And this one is pretty, uh, pretty easy. So let's just try to read the question at first. We have a TCP tail algorithm here in the uh, network simulator two. So we are going to use the relab to do it. And we have two nodes, node zero and node one. The node zero will link to the node one and it will maybe it will send some packets from node zero to node one. And let's just play with the script here. We have a script here. You can click it and download it. And uh, the way we run it is in here in the question one. We need to run a script, and with this kind of parameters in this command. But when you run it, just pay attention to this part. When you try to run this one, you will find some error in the relab because you need to follow these steps to avoid the error. So it is like this. We need to run the script like this. So you can download the file. I already downloaded the file. And you can right click and open the terminal at the current folder. So you make sure you are right, right click at the same folder of the script and you can use the command ls to verify if you have the file or not and it is tpwindow.tcl this file so make sure you have the file in this folder and if you try to run the command ls tp window One five zero one hundred ms. If you try to run this command, then you will find we have some. Eh? No, we don't have any trouble. That's great. If you have any kind of error raising here, then you can try this command three 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 one ns. We have a backup network simulator at this place, 150100 millisecond. Then you can run it. Uh, this is the backup plan, but it seems we fixed this bug right now. So we just need to copy and paste from left hand side. And, and then you find there's no output, but we generate an, uh, a file in here. But we don't need to worry about it right now. We just copy the second line, GNU plot with this script. So you need to download this script as well. And then you paste it and run it. Then you will get a stuff like this. And just put this one in your report and try to answer the question here. So which algorithm are we using? Is it Teho or Reno? This one is Teho. Okay, so now you get 
now you can try to understand what happened in here. So at this place, we have a slow start. Then we have a timeout or packet loss event. Could be fast retransmit or timeout event. Then we drop to one. Then we slow start again. And we do the AIMD. Then we have another timeout event. Then we drop down to one and we do slow start and AIMD and etc. So we just repeat, repeat this one until the end. So after you understand what is Reno, then it, it will be very easy to understand this kind of graph and try to explain this in your report. And also in this graph, you can also see number of packets in the queue. Right? So we can see this is basically the throughput. It's like this. With the higher window size we have, the higher throughput we have. And let's come to the second part, question four. We need to change the algorithm Taiho to TCP Reno right now. So let me just have a screenshot of this page and we will see what is the difference between them. Let me just put a screenshot at this place and we close it and rerun the file. And before we rerun it, we need to edit, modify the file. And you need to find this line and change it to this one. So let's try to modify the file. And here, TP window. So I just opened the file. Uh, not sure in which place but let me search it tcp0 okay so it's in here i i need to change the table to reno algorithm so I just specify it is reno in here so after the modification then we save it and then we run this command again and run this command. And compare with the Taiho algorithm, you will see they do have some differences. So as we know here, at first, we have a congestion, like we have a slow start at the beginning. Then in here, we must have a timeout event. Then we come back to slow start and AMD. And at this place, we have a fast retransmit. And we come back to here. And we have another timeout event another time I event like this. So this is Reno instead of Taiho. Is that okay? So just put these two different graphs into your report. And I think there is another task is to figure out the value will have no packet loss event. Uh, which one is that? Is it question three? Uh, question four, two. 
But anyway, uh, just try to follow the instructions and put this kind of graph in your report. And in one of the question in exercise one, you need to change this value, for example, 150 to 60 and run it like this. Then you will have another graph. And here you can see there is no timeout event. But we do have one time value at the beginning at the slow start phase. And that's it. And now we can try the second one. So for the second one, I want to leave five minutes to you. you now you can try to run the exercise two by yourself. Otherwise, it will be too easy for, to, for you to for this exercise. Now you try to download the script and run it. And we will have a look of it later together. So try to do it by yourself right now.
Okay, any questions? Let's have a look how to generate the file we need in exercise two. Firstly, we need to download script. I think I have already done it. We'll come to the exercise two and download the file put it at downloads or anywhere you want. Then the next step is to right click it and open the terminal here. And you can also verify this by using the command ls. So run this command, it will show you what is the file in here. And make sure you have the script tpfairness.tcl so where's the file is in here so uh, the next step is to run the file network simulator tpfairness and it have generate some stuff in the folder so next step is to plot. We just copy and paste, but make sure you have this script at the same folder. Just download it. You just copy paste. Uh, sorry, it's G G N U plot. Where is the stuff? Uh, it's in here. So you can see that's the stuff we want. In this case, we can see the scenario in the uh, in the network simulator. We have a lot of connection between left hand side to the right hand side. They are all sharing the same bandwidth from node one to node zero. You can see the flow two to flow three is from right, right hand side to left hand side. And four to five, six to seven, eight to nine, they are all sharing the same bandwidth. They are using the same bandwidth to do the communication. And you can consider this one is the router at your home. And this one is, like, let's say, google.com. And at your home router, you have one, two, three, four, five. You have five devices uh, sending the TCP, uh, establishing TCP connection with google.com. And what will be the throughput between them? And this is the throughput. And basically you can see the trend is pr pretty straightforward. Firstly, we have the flow two to three because at the beginning, we don't have any kind of other connection. So the speed could be very high. But after we establish a lot of TCP connection and start uh, like file transferring, and it will share the speed for different TCP links. And you can see the trend is to approaching the average speed at this place. And most of the TCP link will have around this kind of speed. And we can say TCP throughput uh, or TCP connection is pretty fair.
So just imagine, like at your home, you have five different people are downloading files from YouTube. Then you are sharing the same bandwidth, and you will find the speed is decreased as, like, the more user in the same router. So this case is pretty simple and straightforward and very easy to understand. And let's have a look. What if we have a connection with UDP while we have the TCP link? So in the exercise three, you will figure this out. What if we have a UDP link compete with TCP link? And why do we have that kind of uh, stuff? Uh, this one is also pretty easy. You just copy and paste. So you just copy this one, TCP UDP. And again, make sure you have the script already in the, for the exercise three. So you just run the script, it will generate some file. And next step um, is to plot, just copy and paste, copy and paste. Hmm. Could not load. Let's see what happening here. Um, Maybe we need to check if we have PPS. Yes, we do we have the TCP UDP PPS. No, we don't have this file. So we may need to download it. We need to download the file before we run it. Okay, now we have it. And in the exercise three, you will get a similar pattern like this. Then try to explain this. If we have a node zero to node one, why should we have something like this? So this is node zero to node one, and they have two connection between each other. So the first one is the TCP, and the second one is UDP. So unlike the exercise two, in this case, we have two connections. The first one is TCP, the second one is UDP. So, and like, did they share the bandwidth? They do share the same bandwidth, but do they have the same speed? As you can see here, obviously, no. In, in this place, we have the UDP with this kind of packet speed, which is the throughput. And in this place, we have the UDP, which have very low throughput. And do you know what is the reason for that? And why TCP uh, do we know what is the what is the reason for this?
you should be able to answer this question in one sentence. Just a few words. Maybe just a keyword. So if they are using the same bandwidth and they are using the same bandwidth together, why are they have different speed? Any idea? Any keywords? This is the last question for the exercise three. Need to act. Uh, could be one of the reasons need to act, but it's not the direct, directly act reason for this. So just Trying to imagine what do we have learned in exercise one and exercise zero. Do you still remember? In the exercise zero, we revealed what is Reno. And what is Reno actually? How can we call Reno? What kind of algorithm? And what kind of mechanism in TCP? And does the UTP have the similar mechanism? And you can try to answer the question here. Otherwise, I will just leave this question to you and you just put it in the report. This is one of the questions in the report. So why do they have different throughput? Okay, maybe you can like uh, find some idea from this page, uh, this one. So does the UDP have the congestion control or not? And just imagine what is the packet loss rate in this graph? Because we don't have specified we don't have the specifying the uh, packet loss rate at this place, but you must specify some timeout event at these spikes. For example, this, this kind of space. In this place, then you can see this kind of uh spikes are the timeout event especially this one but in here is is it a timeout event 
or not. So just figure out this by yourself. But I just give you a hint. The main reason is the UDP does not have any kind of congestion control as the UDP does not care if the packet delivered or not. But TCP does. And that's the reason, that's the main reason. Just put this one in your report. Okay, so that's it for the these uh, for the assignment. No, it's the lab, sorry. But if you have any question regarding to our assignment, you can also ask it here. And thanks for coming for this week. We still have around one hour. So I'm happy to have any kind of discussion regarding to the assignment or the lab five or lab four. And also let me know if you didn't receive the marks for lab three. I think we have already released the mark from lab one to lab three. So you can have a check. Uh, you can check by click this link. So come to the web CMS and open the web page. Then you will find a button here. Just click this one, the grades. Uh, it says no longer available. Maybe just click this link. So check it via this link. And that's it. And thanks for coming. And I will stop the screen sharing and recording right now. So if you have any question, you can just share your screen or you can just post it on the chat.